Hi, I'm Louis Taylor. I'm a composer based in Bristol and today I'm going to be talking about adaptive video game music and my process about composing that. So I'm going to be breaking down a uh, session that I have written here, a cue if you like, for um, the video game I'm working on called Adapt, which I'll link below. Uh, this game is still in development, due to be released sometime uh, next year, I believe. And uh, it's a great little game. Uh, it's like an evolutionary simulator. Um, so let's jump straight into the, the logic session where I can talk you through how the music works and the different sort of systems we're using to make the music varied and looping and adaptive, etc. So let's just jump straight into logic. Um, what you can see here is the piece is broken up into very clear distinct sections. So originally I composed this and there were no gaps. As you can see here, there's these little gaps that I'm circling around. Um, there weren't any of these, they all just, each part of the piece linked together nicely and it was all one consistent, smooth piece. Um, the reason why I split them into sections is essentially so that I can export each section that can, uh, basically so that they can individually loop, um, back into it, the beginning of, e of its, of its own section, as opposed to having to kind of chop this up, um, in the audio software later, which would take a lot more time. So as you can see here, we've got an intro, one loop, a second loop, and then essentially what is a swell, like a kind of climax part of the piece. Um, but the problem with the swell is that, you know, quite often you need um, some kind of surrounding sections to make it fit in nicely. It can't just go loop to and then swell because of the way the piece loops and the way that you implement the swell it just wouldn't work as well if you didn't have a kind of nice transition to it and then um the ambient section here the swell ambient acts as another kind of transition after the swell to get back into the rest of the piece so um you know for example what you can do is you can first of all loop any one section independently um and then another thing that you can do is go from the middle of loop one. You can basically say, okay, you know, we've heard that three times. Once you've heard it three times uh, in any one playthrough of the entire piece, transition halfway through to loop two or something like that. So it goes from this. So that's just an example. I've got some stuff muted here at the moment because I'm going to show you. Uh, the different sections in a minute, but um, you can just kind of go f anywhere you want to anywhere you want in the piece with a few exceptions. For example, the swell actually changes key, um, so you you can't you can't do it in the swell. Uh, it's in a different key to the rest of the piece, and you would need to play the swell transition every time you'd want to go into the swell. But the swell transition and the swell ambient can actually loop independently themselves as different sections. So you can get a nice lot of variety with this kind of structure. So this is a very basic um, structure system, if you like, that we're going to replicate through all the pieces that we use in the game as much as possible. So um, the next step, once you've figured out the different sections like that, would be to figure out what layers uh, you're going to have and what how you're going to divide the music up into layers because that's very important for the adaptive music side of things. So uh, basically, the way we're doing it in this game is we have uh, several bass layers, kind of like beds, that the music kind of sits on. It's just kind of this base of the music where it it's literally has sometimes got a bass in it um, or an instrument that kind of just carries the rest of the harmony through, a bit of percussion maybe, just to kind of bass level, the most fundamental part of that section. And then on top of that, you can build up several layers. So you could have some, you know, additional harmony from the woodwinds. And then you could have, uh, you know, a, a couple of melody ideas that can be varied and played both together and individually to allow the piece to kind of naturally find uh, its own rhythm. So that's definitely one way you could do that. So, for example, in this particular game, um, there are four seasons that we're splitting up the base layers into. Um, so we're going to have a base layer for the summer, the winter, the autumn, and the spring. 
And then we're going to have two separate base layers for each season, day and night. So we're going to have summer day, summer night, winter day, winter night, etc. Um, and those will, that will be the eight base layers. So whatever the season slash time of day is, that will be the base layer that is being triggered to play. Um, and this will also change depending on the biome of, that you're in in the game. So this is actually based, uh, this music is for the Arctic biome. Now the Arctic was a good one to kind of show you because it's more simple than the other biomes. Um, even though it's actually more complicated, and I'll get to that in a second. The reason I say it's more simple is because there's only really two seasons, the summer and the winter. So that reduces the base layer count to four. So that's a really nice uh, little, you know, simple edge to this piece. However, the Arctic is a lot more complicated than other biomes because the whole point of the game is to try and find an area that your species can... Uh, you know, exist and survive the best. It, so it is possible to exist and survive in the Arctic, but it's a very harsh climate and it's very difficult to actually prosper there, but it, it can be done. So the music is supposed to kind of be this driving, uncomfortable, but also at the same time kind of begrudging force that it's like, okay, we can really do this, but it's hard. It's going to be really tough. It's how I imagine, I base this around, you know, any videos that you'll ever see, any documentaries of polar bears you'll ever see. They always show them in this kind of light that's, they, it makes their life look really difficult. You know, they're really struggling to live in this climate, but it's worth it because, uh, or at least it was worth it when the when the Arctic was still more habitable than it is today. Because um, they were the, you know, the proper predators there. They were the the prime predator, whatever the whatever the word for that is. So that kind of vibe is what I've been going for with the piece. So I'm going to jump right into loop one here, and I'm just going to play you roughly what the uh, summer base layer would be. So what I did for the summer is I've got some marimba, uh, but it's actually marimba rolls because I use the marimba a lot in this piece. I've never used marimba rolls before um, in the rest of the game, but I've used marimba a lot. So I wanted it to kind of just be a little bit uh, unusual. Um, I've got some synths here, which I've um, pr basically composed on my modular synth, which is just here. Um, and it's very ambient, and you can kind of hear that in a second. It's very kind of sparkly. Um, wanted that kind of northern lights feel with the synthesizers, but also that kind of like, well, we've never had synths in this game yet. This must be a little bit of a different region. Um, we've got some, a f you know, some light string ideals and some solo strings. Um, let's see the crotals here. These lovely, um, these lovely, uh, some bass here as well. Some some uh, bass instruments here, and what's a library called Fiddlesticks, which is um, by Lucy Treacher. Uh, she's done this amazing li um, sample library company called Folklorica, and Fiddlesticks is a nickel harper library, and it's a lovely, beautiful um, li library, and it's based, you know, around that kind of northern feel. The nickel, nickel harpers from it's a kind of northern instrument, and it's. Um, it's very kind of Scandinavian, and that kind of fits in with this Arctic vibe. Um, so what else do we have here? I think that's pretty much it. I think the bass, the bass clarinet as well. Um, the contrabassoon, I don't think, actually plays on this bass layer. So we can just listen to this first. <laughs> This is kind of how the music would feel. And we can add in some wind harmony. And then we can add in some melody now. And I've got two different melodies going on here. I've got the bassoon and the alto flute. They blend nicely together so they can be played at the same time or uh, quite simply one or the other, where whatever the game chooses at random, basically. And then it just loops like that, basically, but we can take out some of these winds. And it still functions nicely. 
So that's kind of how that layer works. And you know, if I wanted to show you a bit about how the winter bass layer works, I think I've actually removed the percussion. Um, basically because I, I didn't want it to be too clear about what's going on uh, in the winter because it's a much more murky season in the Arctic. It's much more difficult to live. I wanted it to be even more uncomfortable and even more ambiguous. So basically in the winter, we've got these low, um, these low winds that are kind of muddying the, the waters a little bit. We've got these, um, a very similar kind of set selection of instruments, but we've removed the marimba now because we want it to be even less clear. Now, uh, I'll, give, I'll go to an extreme because the daytime is actually supposed to be, you know, you can actually see what's going on in the day. Whereas the nighttime is taking that kind of lack of clarity to a new extreme. We wanted that to be really ambiguous. So there's no percussion. There's no like kind of bass um, rhythmic instrument like the marimba or the celeste. We've got none of that. It's just kind of ambience. So if we kind of go and we take out the fill six bass, let's see, I think this is roughly the winter one. But like I say, we can still add in the harmony if we want to. And let's say the flute melody here as well. But immediately, if you wanted it to be summer, all we have to do is add in this percussion and a marimba and these strings here. It's a lot more clear rhythmically what's going on now. I just feel like it's more vibrant, more refreshing, crisp. So that's the kind of compositional vibe that I was going down. The same is to be said for all of the other sections. And these are some really important considerations that help me um, shape the way this composition unfolds. And I think during the composition process, it was really important for me to know how I was going to structure this beforehand so that I could kind of build this system up of the system of music, um, you know, based on that very fundamental premise of, stru of structuring. So that really helped. And I think that that would be a good idea for you to do if you were going to go about making some adaptive music. Basically, come up with a, some sort of system to how it's going to be looped, how you're going to vary it, and then write on top of that idea, basically. Um, and I think doing it based on the areas in the game and the day and night is a really, really nice, simple way of um, creating a lot of variety. So that's basically how this composition goes. Um, I'm not going to go into too much more detail. Maybe if you'd like, I can do a full breakdown of the whole composition and I can go into all the different elements that I've gone into here, show you the different libraries I'm using and everything and different recordings. Um, but I'm going to make another video in FMOD, which is the program we're using to um, actually implement this music into the game. Uh, so similar to WYs, if you've heard of that, it's basically just an audio implementation software. You can do it for sound effects as well. It's brilliant. It's free. Um, worth getting some practice in on that. If you're even if you're not involved in any uh, professional or even amateur projects, um, it's it's well worth getting involved, uh, getting some practice in on those things. So I'll be making a video about that. And until then, I hope you have enjoyed this little breakdown of how to make adaptive video game music. And I will see you next time. Thank you and have a good one. Cheers. Bye.